you for joining us for Ask a Therapist, the Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina series in which we speak with mental health professionals about issues many people face every day. I'm one of your hosts, Ryle Curtis, and today we are joined again by Medical Director Dr. Jennifer Pender to continue our conversation on how a medical diagnosis can impact a person's mental health. We will discuss treatment options and also what friends and family can do to help. We understand that physical activity is so important and is recommended for some cancer patients to improve mental health. Why is this and what role does physical health play in mental health? I don't know if you saw recently, but they there was a, I think it was a news article out about just walking and how walking can improve our overall general health, reduce our levels of blood pressure issues improve our cognition, improve our anxiety overall. So just simple walking seems to change that mind, body, gut connection, heart connection. I don't know exactly how that works. Uh, uh, These things are multifactorial and, and pretty complicated. However, we think it might be related to how we deal again with stress. And stress affects our body by increasing one of the hormones called cortisol. And that cortisol, if you have it in your body over time, it stresses the cells in your body, can cause other life-threatening illnesses. Some people feel like what's called oxidative stress, maybe some of what leads to cancer, other cancer diagnosis. So simply walking reduces that stress hormone exercise and not physical, like super physical exercise. We're talking about yoga, mindfulness practices, some Pilates, there's some data on that, but really generally just walking. And I know some people have have heard of the 10,000 steps a day. The data in an article that I was reading says that right now, maybe just 4,000 steps. So if you feel overwhelmed with needing to get 10,000 steps in, I know for me, it's hard to get 10,000 steps in a day with my job in front of a computer, but 4,000 steps a day seems more reasonable for me. And it's found recently that that might be just as effective as 10,000 steps. And we talked about post-diagnosis, talking to your doctor. We even talked about the effectiveness of, of support groups. We haven't touched on family and friends and loved ones. Can, can family and loved ones also have a post-diagnosis uh, mental health challenge? Yes, it can be hard to watch someone that you love struggle with pain or having to take medicine, medications or having to go to the hospital. So there can be some worsening of mental health issues like depression or anxiety or sleep issues when someone has a major medical diagnosis or change in the way that they were coping with their family. So for example, let's say that the spouse was the major breadwinner in the family, but they have this diagnosis and now can't work. That creates more stress on the other spouse. That can worsen their depression and their anxiety. So support groups for caregivers is also available and seems to be helpful. I think it's also important for physicians who are treating people with major medical illnesses like cancer, uh, Parkinson's disease, that they check in with the spouse. Um, I, As part of some of my, my continuing education, I just read about Parkinson's disease and that worsening depression in the caregiver of someone who has Parkinson's disease actually worsened the outcome of that patient. So if you targeted the depression of the caregiver and they were doing better, the patient with Parkinson's also did better in terms of their functional status. And that was just really surprising to me when I was reading that, or maybe not so surprising now that we're talking about the, the mind body connection. I think that it's, we just haven't been talking about it, how much our mental health plays a role in our physical health and how much the mental health of the people around us also contributes to our physical health. If you're a friend or a family member and you have someone in your life that's struggling post-diagnosis and and you notice they're really struggling from a mental health standpoint, what is something you can do to help? What can friends and family do to help? I know that sometimes it can feel very overwhelming 
the main thing is just letting people know that you're there and you don't have to solve the problems for them, but just letting them know that they're not alone. Kind of what we talked about before, isolation, social isolation, loneliness can be a key factor to worsening the feelings of depression, anxiety. So just letting someone know that you're there, texting them or calling them or leave a message and maybe not talking specifically about their diagnosis, but just about something funny or something that you saw at the store that you want to share with them. Again, letting them know that things are going to be okay um, in terms of hopefulness that my friends will be there. Sometimes you can just call your friends and family and let them know, you know, I don't know what to say about this, but I want you to know that I'm here and I'm willing to just sit on the phone with you. Sometimes people just need you to breathe with them just to let them know that they're not alone. You don't actually have to say anything. You just have to be there. That's so important. My last question is back to the patient. Um, you know, if, if you're a patient and you're really find yourself struggling from a mental health standpoint, what's one piece of advice you'd give that, cause obviously that can seem very overwhelming and isolating to your point. What's one piece of advice you'd give to the patient might be experiencing that? Let them know that they're not alone. Let them know that please tell your physician, tell your friend. If you feel like you can't do anything like that and you're feeling like you are so down that you can't go any further, there's several numbers out there that you can reach out to people. We have 988 now as a national number for mental health crisis. It's been a long time coming and I tell as many people as I can like how you used to have 911 for all your mental health, their medical crisis. Now 988 is available as a national number if you need help. Main thing is don't be alone and know that someone's here. Is there anything else you think is especially important for people to know about a medical diagnosis and a person's mental health? I think the key of kind of what we talked about before is that they're so much interconnected and interdependent of each other. It's hard to separate the brain from the body. We've been trying to do that for so long. But, you know, what I talked about at the beginning, even the ancient Greeks knew that that was better, that that, that wasn't how things worked. And I think Hippocrates, we kind of consider him the father of medicine, said the same thing. You know, um, there's a national natural healthy force within each one of us. And its greatest force is getting us well. So your mind and your body work together interdependently to keep us going, keep us going well. And one relies on the other. So if your mental health is struggling. We, we suggest you get out walking. We, we suggest getting sunlight. We suggest having those friends and support. Cardiovascular treatment, if you're having hypertension or any kind of car, cardiac or heart problems, we suggest having your depression treated. It seems to directly improve one and the other. Well, this is a really important topic. And as you mentioned, this is something that's become only more relevant and more important um, post-pandemic. So really appreciate your time. Uh, this is especially helpful. And someone that may be going through this issue or know someone that may be going through a, a post-diagnosis mental health challenge um, should find this especially helpful. So I want to thank you uh, for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I want to thank Dr. Jennifer Pender for joining us today. We hope this discussion can help you or someone you know. Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina members can call the phone number located on the back of their insurance card for mental health resources. We hope you'll join us again for our next Ask a Therapist discussion.